The Lord be with you. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. It's March 22nd, and we're going to do the readings, the sermon, the prayers, and the benediction for our worship this morning. The readings um, are not the appointed ones, with the exception of the Old Testament reading. Um, the Old Testament reading is for this Sunday, but the Epistle and Gospel um, are special readings for times like this. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, verses 14 through 21. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, to paths that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame, who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He sees many things but does not observe them. His ears are open but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased for his righteousness sake to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is taken from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostilities against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. The Gospel is from Luke, the fourth chapter, verses 38 through 41. And as he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house, now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she rose and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases, brought them to him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of the many, crying, You are the Son of God. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you in the name of Jesus our Savior. Amen. The text this morning, as I mentioned, is from Hebrews. And I'm going to just read a portion of it again. Therefore, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which sin clings so closely. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostilities against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. So, in times like this, to whom do we turn? We turn to our God for comfort, and strength and peace. So as I was thinking about what to do on this Sunday, I was thinking about movies, and movies in particular that start at the end. So when the first bit of the movie comes up, it starts maybe at the middle or the end, and then through a series of flashbacks or whatever cinematographic whatever cinematography they decide to do in storytelling, they come back 
to the end, but they start at the end and then get to the beginning of the movie. There are lots of movies like that. You can Google movies that start at the end. Um, one list that I found um, showed that the movie Forrest Gump is one of those movies. It starts somewhere in the middle or closer to the end, but at the beginning. And that's what I want to do with this sermon. I want to start at the end of the text and move backward to the beginning. So we're thinking about fixing our eyes on Jesus. Well, the first thing we have to realize is at the end of the text, it talks about he, Jesus, setting his eyes on you first. Why? So that you wouldn't grow weary or faint-hearted. Let's talk about your faith for a moment. Over the years, you've been here at worship or at other churches. Who would have thought a week ago we would be where we are in Saskatchewan? So much has already changed. If you were in worship last week, this seems very different and very concerning. Your eyes of faith and your eyes which see the world would never have seen that we are not venturing out of our homes, much less to worship. But this isn't the first time in history where there haven't been worship services. Recently on Facebook, and where else, I saw a picture of one of those big church record books. And it was from 1918. In that book, like all church record books, it includes all the things that comprise the life of the church. Baptisms, weddings, funerals. It also had a record of what happened every Sunday. But in 1918, there were four Sundays at this particular church where there was an eerily similar note to what we're going to be entering in a similar book. No church due to Spanish influenza. We will, of course, write no church service due to COVID-19 virus. The text talks about the mighty cloud of witnesses. The folks that didn't go to church in 1918, for the same reason we aren't going to church, is for the safety of others and for ourselves. And you know, if you go further back into history, you'll find that there were similar virus or viral outbreaks in the second, third, and sixth century in the Roman Empire. The Christians in those days were instrumental in that time. They were and are one of the groups of the mighty cloud of witnesses mentioned in the text this morning. But more about that later. So now where does this all put you? I have to admit that if there were ever a time to grow weary or faint-hearted, it truly is now. In Italy, to date, they've lost over 4,000 people to the COVID-19 virus. In Canada, our rates are rising, and here in Saskatchewan, they keep rising too. The bad news just seems to keep on coming. Restrictions, even in this past week, are getting ever tighter. Mandatory self-isolation is a real thing. Most of us are head heeding the government's advice to stay inside. We can't do the vast majority of things we did only last week. Some people can't even see their loved ones who are hospitalized or in a care home. We can't see in person the people we spend time with for fear of catching or transmitting the virus. It's grim. What hope do we have? There doesn't seem to be much of that now. There are grocery lineups. There's hoarding of food. There's hoarding of all manner of supplies. We don't even know when we can emerge from our sheltering in place. We don't know when this is all going to be over. We just 
don't know. We're afraid of the unknown. But what about the known? What do we know? What do we know about our faith, our God, our Savior, our Jesus? Here's what we know. We endured, we know that he endured for us on the cross to give us hope, the forgiveness of sins. The hope is the cross where he put himself for us. He was neither weary or faint-hearted. My friends in Christ, we have hope. We have hope that brings assurance. In the Bible, hope really is assurance. It's comfort. It's peace. Because it is all in God's hands. Christ was loving and intentional in his desire to be your Savior. He would be the one who would take upon himself your hopelessness, your despair, your weariness, and your faint-heartedness. Why? So that he could be your hope, your joy, your vigor, your courage, making him what he is, your Savior. He is the author, the perfecter of your faith. He wrote the book of your faith. He knows you so very well. He knit you together in your mother's womb. The faith that he gave you is for you and you alone for these times. Everything in your life has already worked for the good and will continue to be like that in your faith. He, we will be living our whole lives with the tension of our doubts and weaknesses of faith and our faith itself. In fact, I would argue, and I always have told people this, that if you don't have doubts, you don't have faith. Peter himself doubted. That's how it is on this side of the grave. He authored your faith on the cross by giving of himself for you, his life, his righteousness. The beginning of your faith died on the cross. He rose again from the dead, and he lives and reigns to all eternity. Why? You know why. That I, that you, may be his own and live under him, in his kingdom and serve him in all everlasting righteousness, blessedness, and innocence. And he keeps on perfecting your faith. He keeps working on it. Your faith never stops growing this side of the grave. In his word, which gives you life. In your baptism, which washes you clean. In the sacrament of Holy Communion, which strengthens your faith and forgives you your sins. All of these are the gifts from God that sustain you in this time for this time. The author of the book of Hebrews talks about <coughs> running the race of endurance. This is a long run journey that is our faith in this life. It's a faith that keeps on growing and being strengthened right now. Even as the mighty cloud of witnesses too was sustained and got through their time, they trusted the one who is solid and unchanging. When everything around them and us now seems to be crumbling, when things are changing so quickly. Now, knowing all of this, set your eyes on Jesus. Run the race. It is an endurance race. It is not just for a moment. Like so many things in the kingdom, it's, and it's always the opposite of the world, that's how this race is. Your faith trusts God above all things. This faith is for life. When it is this way, it sees with the eyes of faith. Those faith eyes see what the world doesn't. God's presence, even when it doesn't look like it. And so now I want to invite you to set aside everything that burdens you. Put it all down. 
Put off the burdens of all that afflicts you. Cast your cares on Jesus. Do what is needed on this side of the grave to care for others. In this time, you may, as a Christian, be able to serve others. Remember the Christians I mentioned earlier who lived through the brutal time of those viral outbreaks in the 2nd, 3rd, and 6th centuries? They didn't just exist. They served others as Jesus did. They risked their own lives to care for their neighbors. They rose to the occasion to live out their faith and not just talk about it. If you're able to help someone else at the church, at faith, or outside the church, you will have an impact on our society in the same way that those 2nd, 3rd, and 6th century Christians did. They cared for others as they were able to. They showed that the church wasn't just a building, but it was a people of God, set apart for service to other people, and therefore in service to God. Take the yoke of Christ, for his burden is easy and light. He exchanges the weight of your sin, your burdens, your doubts, your heartache, your pain, and gives you that which is light, the forgiveness of your sins, the goodness of his righteousness, which is all the good merits, the goodness that God gave Jesus because of his work for us on the cross. And so I continue to invite you to look to Jesus. People who have gone before us, they too looked to Jesus. Now we begin at the beginning where it all started. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your eyes focused on Him. God is always there. He always has been and He always will be. He will keep you close in the midst of this away time, away from your faith family, perhaps away from your family. God will be there for you. And we as a church, a congregation, a community of believers, and a family of faith will be waiting for you when you come back. In the meantime, the one who created our faith, who keeps writing it and making it more perfect every day, will be here so that we can, by his strength and grace, always keep our eyes fixed on him. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in him forever. Amen. Let us pray the prayers of the church. In your mercy, O Lord, hear the prayers of your people as we call on you on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of great distress. In mercy, we pray, put an end to the coronavirus epidemic that is afflicting many people around the world. We pray that you would grant relief to those who are suffering and comfort to those who mourn, mourn the death of loved ones. Sustain all medical personnel who are attending to the sick, and bless the efforts of those who are working tirelessly to discover a treatment for this disease. In these times of affliction and distress, strengthen us by your word and spirit to continue steadfast in the one true saving faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, creator of the cosmos, maker of all things visible and invisible, who in holy wisdom orders and sustains all things in wondrous and grand diversity and splendor. In your lavish grace, you have given us the gifts of reason and senses to plumb the wondrous mysteries of your creation. 
Bless those whose vocation is the study of viruses, diseases, and their cure and containment. Grant them wisdom, perseverance, and clarity that their efforts would serve to protect and preserve life and increase knowledge and understanding. With knowledge comes responsibility as well as fear and humi humility. Teach us to use our knowledge in wisdom and faithfulness. Protect our scientists and medical researchers from any harm or dangers that work might entail and grant your benevolent blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, said, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul. The fear of you is the beginning of wisdom, for in the fear of you there is nothing left to fear. Our world is in turmoil and fear. We fear for our health, our lives, our future. Calm our fears in the fear of you. Turn our hearts and minds toward you and keep them in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Fix our eyes on Christ and his coming, lest in our anxieties over things temporal, we lose sight of the things eternal that he has won for us all by his dying and rising. Hear us for his name's sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sheltering at home and in self-imposed isolation, we pray, gracious Father in heaven, your Son went the way of death, resurrection, and ascension in order to prepare for us a place in your eternal home. Our homes have now become a shelter in this viral storm, and yet they feel like a prison at times. Sanctify our homes, we pray, and all who dwell in them. Protect them from the snares and deceits of the evil one. Stir up in us a deeper affection for one another and manifest in us the fruit of the Spirit who dwells among us and within us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-discipline. Make our homes dwelling places of your word little monasteries of devotion, prayer, and common life together. We thank you for the science and technology that have enabled us to talk to each other even as we shelter in place. The instruments that once threatened to drive us apart now enable us to reassure and comfort our friends, families, and neighbors. Remind us all that we are but pilgrims and travelers here and that our true home and shelter is with you, you in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear us as we pray for Jesus' sake. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction and blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. <laughs>